44 minutes after the hour, America, it's Hugh Hewitt. If you read one piece by a uh, man of the left about yesterday, go read Thomas Edsel in the New York Times making the president small. Of course, he gets it. He's been getting it for decades. Thomas Edsel, welcome back to the Hugh Hewitt Show. It's great to talk to you. It's good to be with you, Hugh. Now, at the end of your piece, when you quote uh, David Legge from Notre Dame, he seemed yeah. to make the president a victim, when in fact, I think... The president's achieved in his first two years pretty much everything he set out to do. All we're watching is the unfolding reaction to it, Thomas Edsel. Well, I tend to agree that uh, a victim portrayal is not correct, uh, that Obama is has made his own bed, and he's paying the price for it at this moment. Well, he, he did. He got Obamacare. He got uh, the, the financial reform bill. He got the stimulus. He got two Supreme Court justices. He got reelected. And the country basically shuddered yesterday. They don't like it, do they, Tom? Well, I think they shuddered at his leadership, which has been pretty weak in the face of a series of crises. And he has not done on the economic front what a clearly the American people want, which is more jobs, better income, and growth. That might, I, I don't know if that's deep enough. Let me, let me push on this one. Um, Tom ahead. Cotton won by 18 points in Arkansas, a state that has not had two Republican senators since Reconstruction. 18 points against a legacy candidate who was extraordinarily well-funded, who was hidden away from tough votes by Harry Reid, what does that tell you? That's not just Arkansas turning red. That's that's a revolution. Uh, well, I mean, it's a longer issue than we have to talk about it, but I think there are some really serious problems on the Democratic side. And uh, the party has been depending on issues like uh, the war on women and depending on demographics. And it may be running out of gas. That's, That's why I liked your piece. You warned them that they can't rely on demographic inevitability, which they've been doing for a long time. What about the president's threat today? It had to be considered a threat in his press conference a couple hours ago to use unilateral action to uh, to cease the prosecution of people in the country illegally. In other words, amnesty by default. Uh, well, he's going to risk a strong congressional reaction to that if he does it. Um, but, uh, to be honest, politically, I don't know if that's, uh, that dumb a move. Uh, it, it'll create some howls of anger and it will increase turnout probably among, uh, people who are opposed to what he's doing, but it will also increase support for the Democratic Party among Hispanics. It's one of those, uh, political gambles. That uh, he may have no, nothing to lose by it. He's, listen, he's not going to run again. Yeah, but Hillary is his is his heir apparent, and she went down and campaigned in Arkansas. She went with Bill to Kentucky on behalf of Allison Grimes. She and Bill, do, do you think the president cares at all how they fare in this, or is it all just about his legacy at this point? Well, I'm not sure that he is uh, madly in love with Hillary. She ran against him, and it got a little nasty back there in 2008. Um, and she has uh, stiff-armed him a few times recently, keeping her distance. So I'm not sure that he is thinking so much of passing his legacy on to her. I, I, well, to be honest, I, I'm not sure how much commitment Obama has to his own party. I, oh, I agree with this. I think people have underestimated his detachment from the Democratic machine for a long time. He's his own guy. He's a party of one. I know. He, there's a lot that he should have done as president for his own party, and he has basically seen his party take first a severe hit in 2010 and now a, a, a equally severe hit, if not more substantial than 2014, and he has left the party, and I, he is leaving the party, I think, in bad shape for 2016. 
That's a shambles right now, and Debbie Wasserman Schultz isn't the person to fix it. Let me close this way, Thomas Edsel. You've watched a lot of administrations come and go, Republican and Democrat. You know, talented staff and not-so-talented staff. If you had to grade the people around President Obama right now uh, against the challenges that they are facing, George W. Bush fired Rumsfeld in 2006 or accepted his resignation. Uh, Should the president be cleaning house in the White House because of the quality of his staff right now? I don't know if that's a solution. I, uh, you ask what I would grade the staff. I, I would give them, a, say, a C minus or a D plus. Uh, I, I think, I'll, but I'm not sure that firing people is going to save him. That's all. It's, uh, it probably should happen. Should should but the I, Democrats? But I think have... the problem is really that. Somehow, Obama doesn't seem to be connecting as the leader of his party and as president of the United States. I agree with that. He's so connecting those are with the two things he really has the obligation to do. So firing a lot of people is is uh, doesn't resolve the issue. He's not alone in this fiasco. Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi share Pelosi less so because she's been out of power, but Harry Reid. Should they go uh, as part of an attempt to salvage the wreckage of the Democratic Party? You know, that's uh, I'm, that, uh, that's, uh, I, 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 I don't want to call shots saying someone that that Pelosi or Reid should resign. Uh, they've had their ups and downs. I, 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 again, I think the problem lies. Uh, in the head of the fish, and the, and the head of the fish is Obama, and he is not exhibiting the strengths that you would want to see if you were a Democrat uh, as the leader of your party. Are you or disappointed, he, Tom Edsel? There's uh, we got a minute left. Are you disappointed by him, Obama? Yes. Yeah, I was never. I wasn't one of these guys who was wild for him back in 2008. Although I. Uh, I thought it was interesting, and I, I supported him. But I, I now feel I am disappointed, yes. Thomas Edsel, it's always good to talk with you. The, the story, Making the President Small, the opinion piece in the New York Times, must-reading for anyone who wants to know what happened yesterday. It's in the New York Times. I'll tweet out the link. Thank you, Thomas. I'll be right back to wrap up this hour and get ready for Dr. Larry Arn of Hillsdale College coming along next hour for an out-of-sequence Hillsdale Dialogue, usually on Friday. We're doing it today to talk about the election aftermath. Stay tuned.